car accident, drowning, and they'll say, what was just their time to go? God wanted, to, you know, their name was up next on the uh, book of whatever, and, you know, God was ready for them to come with him. Is that God, or is that these beings that you were talking about before that come and do, you know, like, the walk-in or whatever? Okay. You have disagreeable beings who can be responsible for deaths, meaning there are disagreeable beings who are responsible for putting out drugs like crack and placing it in a society where people have either nothing to do or feel so down about their own personal worth because they've only been taught that you're good for nothing that they have no choice but to resort to that drug, take crack, overdose on it, and die. They are responsible for that. Now, is there a God that's all loving somewhere, looking here, that cares about us? No, not the way they're teaching. Our descendants, the Nitiru, the ancient ones, Elohim, by some, the gods, they gave us the ability to think and reason that we may create our own societies, our own cultures, meaning, we can all right now be in Atlanta somewhere, or in New York, or in California, correct? Saying, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, having a bunch of meetings. Or we chose to come and listen to one, the master of masters, Pharaoh Atumre, correct? And we're in a safer or a safe environment, a safe haven. They gave us that ability to say, I'm tired of living in this big city. I'm tired of the sirens. I'm tired of the drugs. I'm tired of every time I walk out my door, I don't know if I'm going to make it back in. I'm tired of worrying about the food. Every time I buy some food, I might get E. coli. I might get Ebola. I might get streptococcus. I might get salmonella. I might get a multiple of different bacteria or viruses or, or diseases that are going around. I'm tired of that. So let's go off somewhere and establish something where we can begin to control our own, begin to grow our own food, and we don't have to worry about those things. Understand? No, there is no God that's up there that you know one loving and thinking about us all the time. It's up to us to think about us. This is what our teacher teaches us. That we have to take responsibility for our environment. When they say such and such died, it was their time. If that was their destiny to die, yes, there is a, there is a such thing as destiny. But to say it's controlled by a guy named God who sits on a throne up in heaven all by himself where there's these angels. This is something that's funny for those who have a Bible. When you go to the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 20. In Exodus, chapter 33, verse 20, it says, And he, God, said, You cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Now, correct us if we're wrong. Does this mean anybody who looks at God is going to die? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. So any, let's all say it. Anybody who looks at God is going to die. Say it. Yeah. Anybody who looks at God is going to die. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 for a moment. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, this is the Beatitudes. Jesus, the blessed, they say. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He just told me if I see him, I'm going to die. Now you're telling me I'm blessed if I see him. And then you tell me I should want to die to go to a place called heaven where I'm going to sit on the right hand side of God. If I'm sitting on the right hand side of God, that means I'm seeing him, and if I see him, I'm dying. And so if I'm dying, then heaven must not be a place of everlasting life. Which is it? Come on. Right Y'all see the game they're playing? That's a little game they're playing. No, we don't want that crap. Give it back to them. We want the waffle. We want facts. I've seen my God, and I didn't die. I've seen my God, and he's given me life. He's given me a reason to want to live on. And he's doing it for each and every one of us sitting here today. We've seen our God in human form, and we've seen the works of our God in human form, and we're not dead. So you tell Mr. Christian, you know, the good reverend, you tell him, and you tell them, all those fake religious people, they can have that stuff back. We want to see facts. That's all we want. 
Any other questions? Can you explain to me the non-ether and um, the meaning of Elohim and El? Okay. El or El Elohim. Okay, so we'll go the other way. I'll start with the El Elohim, Elohim non-ether. When you refer to the word Elohim, Elohim simply means these beings. It is an Aramic word or Hebrew word meaning these beings. When you go into the book of Genesis, where it says, and God said, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image. Genesis 1 26. That word, let us, that word is Elohim. It says in God, that word God is Elohim. A group of beings that decided, let's make these human people, these human beings on this planet. The reason you knew it had to be a group is by the fact that if it was one God, we should all look the same. Now look around. Everybody look around for me. Do we all look the same, yes or no? Say it again. So evidently there had to be a multiple types of features and looks that were standing there when they were created human beings. Okay? When you say El, El can be Anu, who is the El of all of the beings in his realm referred to as Lahut. El simply meaning the highest of them. El can be the being referred to as Mikael or Michael or Melchizedek who is the El or the highest of all of the angelic hosts. El can also refer to, be referred to, uh, to as far as Tammuz, who is the El or the deity that was assigned to human beings. We refer to him in our culture as of Tamare as Haru or Horn or Horus. Overstood. El can also be you when you're amongst us as we're all sitting here, we'd be considered Elohim. Let's all say that. Now, when you leave here and go amongst people that have no knowledge of this information, to them, you become an L. You become a wise person. Though to you and I, when we're together, we say, we don't know nothing compared to the master. Man, he's wild. But when you're out there talking to people who know even less than we do, they're looking at you saying, Wow, and you're like, I don't know nothing. You gotta come see my teacher. My teacher told you this thing. <laughs> All ladies, you can see everything. Come on. Next Sunday, I'll pick you up. Okay, now, two, nine ether. Nine ether is two things. There's a physical manifestation of nine ether, which is dealing with the hair follicles, which curl up. Which curl up like that. Which most of us we don't even have anymore uh, because of uh, interbreeding, as you have it. Or nine ether, as the science called Nawapo. Nawapo is a science that takes us to sound right reasoning, that takes us to the highest of all existing gases. Nine ether is a combination of all existing gases, all existing uh, elements, as you have it, for lack of a better word. The highest point that you can reach would be nine ether. Overstood? And that would be in your etheric state where you would no longer have a physical body. The physical body, as taught by Pharaoh Atom Ray, is the plague or the bacteria that keeps us trapped here on earth. That keeps us caught up in the wrong things. Overstood? Now, no, we're not saying don't kill yourself. For those who you know, we'll say, well, well, I don't need a physical body. It's saying that the physical body while you're here is a vehicle by which to educate, for lack of a better word, your soul or the real you, so that when you cease to breathe on this physical plane, the real you will be able to move on into other states of existence. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I'm curious to know why is it so difficult to understand legal terminology or uh, the way they instruct the laws through law school and having it not determining their laws. Because it was never meant for you to understand. Because it's not your law. They say it's called the, what system? What's the name of the system? Criminal justice system. Say that word with the J. 
Yes. Say it again. Yes. Just us, the people that were writing it. They didn't plan on you being involved in that mess. Overstand? So it's difficult because it's worded not for you not to overstand. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be. No, we should go on in there and learn to overstand it. So when we go into their courtroom and we play in their game on their court, we know the rules to the game. Most of the time we go to court, we lose. We have one amongst us, Nietzsche Atamre, who does know the rules to the game. That's why every time they try to come at him, they put out something, a newsletter. We put it out, they can't fight it. 